G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday evening, sort of afternoon here in Australia, evening, we're past the afternoon now, uh, and Bitcoin has recovered quite nicely, 51,000, so that is very nice, there's some volume, we're up at $2.43 trillion, but we're not out of the woods yet, there's still some things that we need to keep a lookout for, but at least we've made a bit of a bounce back. But I'm just not completely sold that we're out of the woods just yet. And I'll get into why shortly. But let's have a look at the markets. Up 2.43 trillion, which is nice. Bitcoin dominance continues to drop. People are still more bullish on altcoins. A little bit of volume there, again, to be expected. That's why the market is up and quite substantially. 6.3%. Bitcoin price now over 51,000. I mean, we got down to 41,000. So that's a $10,000 recovery in sort of a matter of days. But we've still come down a long way as well, which is something we need to remember. And gas prices still remaining, I'm not going to say cheap, but just as in, you know, like legitimately cheap. They're not legitimately cheap, but cheap compared to where they've been. So, you know, thank God for small mercies, they say. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the market. We can see there's some nice movers. I mean, look at Cardano, you know, nice 11% move. We've got some news coming up about that solana making a nice move back up above 200 so really bitcoin hasn't recovered quite as well but the altcoins have done quite well i mean look at ethereum so doing quite nice as well so what's done the best in the last sort of 24 hours and considering there's been some good moves that we can see right there well BitTorrent has absolutely rocketed and polygon matic <laughs> i was telling you i don't want to say you know that i told you so but I was telling you, it was just, it's too good a product with too many partnerships to stay down for too long. And $2.42, I think that might be a new all-time high. So, I mean, it just rocketed up 33%. That is one hell of a move. Loopring as well, I'm regretting, you know, ever sort of selling that and probably should have bought back in. But anyway, you know, you can't have them all. That's the way it is. I mean, Safe Moon, good Lord, what are people thinking? Even Bitcoin... Uh, you know, BSV has had massive moves. This has me somewhat concerned, though, in all fairness. There's some sort of crazy moves. You know, Bitcoin SV is what has me worried. Safe Moon has me worried. These other ones, not so much. That's, you know, they found their lows and they've moved. Look, even Engine, Mana, some, you know, you know, pretty much all the coins have had a nice move. It scares me. And we'll get onto the Bitcoin chart and, that'll, and I'll show you why. But let's have a look what hasn't performed so well. In the last 24 hours hardly anything so ohms down you know less than a percent waves down less than a percent and then we're basically into almost stable coin sort of territory really so yeah everything is generally done pretty well and that is what worries me now we get to the bitcoin chart so this is what worries me we've had a couple of days and nice moves from again this kind of 46 and look we even wicked down in that 41,000, but we haven't set a new high yet this, these last three days are good. They're higher than each other, but we need to break this. We need to get above 53,000 for us to at least have half a chance that this isn't still going to be one, two, three. Uh, we roll over. One, sort of that was almost, uh, that, that was nearly equal to three, roll over. One, two, we have a third, we roll over. So that has been what's happening. One, two, we roll over. So I am not sold that we're out of the woods just yet, although a lot of people will be, and it's the leverage that we need to keep an eye on. If everyone suddenly goes, that was the bottom, it's in, and bang, they're putting in massive leverage, we will go down again. I, and like I said, I'm not sold that we're not going to come back down here and test these low 40s again, and maybe even 36 or the $34,000 mark where there is a CME gap. So that is what I'm looking for. And look, I think we can go down to the $34,000 mark and still recover from that, but it will be pretty scary uh, in all fairness. I don't know where I'm going to be about, you know, whether I start to sell if we again set in another lower high. Because, I mean, look, that rolled over, that rolled over. We've had a couple more times where we could have gone above yet. And as I said the other day, we just need to at least consider maybe we are in a bear market. I don't think we are. I'm not behaving in any manner like we are. But I am keeping it in my mind that, look, maybe we are. And if Bitcoin starts to get down to the, you know, kind of $37,000, $38,000 level, then... 
yeah, I'll be pretty concerned. And if I haven't already taken a lot of profits by then, I will certainly be taking uh, a ton more profits if we start to get to around, again, this uh, $37,000 level. But again, yeah, you know, no one really knows what's going to happen. And it's not like it wouldn't have been before that I'll take a whole lot of profits at 30-something thousand, 37, let's say, 38,000, and then it just starts to rocket back up. That is, yeah, they the market is good at finding maximum pain and then, yeah, doing the complete opposite of what everyone thought was coming. So that's what I'm looking for. I really, you know, we, I mean, you know, this mark here is sort of 53,000, and even that's kind of still 53-ish, 54,000. I want to see us get above this white trend line, really. This is really more what I'm looking for. I want to see us get above here and, again, start to use this as support. But, look, even if we don't simply use this as, as support, as long as we start to get up and start to make our way above it, because at the moment things are still, yeah, bearish, I guess. That's kind of a word. And we still have a ways to go before we can, you know, sort of say that we're out of this. So I get a feeling like we're probably going to get up to around this yellow mark here. So 53,000, let's say sort of 100-ish, or sorry, 52,000. Yeah, so that's 53,100. I reckon about the $53,000 mark on the money, I wouldn't be surprised if we roll over and we're not going to come back and retest the 40-ish thousand dollar level. Now, I'm not sure we're going to get down to the $36,000 level. It's definitely a possibility. But I am somewhat suspicious that this is going to falter before the $53,000 mark uh, and then roll over and we're going to have to come back down and test this sort of area. All right, moving on. Now, have a look at the S&P 500. Again, it still hasn't set in a new high. It got a wick up there, which was nice, but the close at the moment is still, bu still below this and only slightly above this. So we really got to wait and see like what's going to happen with the S&P 500 because again I've said this before the correlation is there the correlation is real if this rolls over crypto is rolling over simple as that that's just the way uh, it is all markets get affected by the S&P 500 rolling over the S&P 500 doesn't get affected by other markets rolling over as much though so that's what you need to remember you know S&P 500 is a really good indicator of where things are going to go in general because it's the biggest market out there and I want to see that get back above 46 and then really I want to see it get back up above sort of 46 40 yeah 46 4650 let's say if it can get back above there then I'll be you know happy and thinking yep things are you know back to looking good but until that happens I'm just not sold now ethereum this is very interesting like I said this is the ethereum versus bitcoin chart going all the way back to sort of 2000 and god was that 16 17 and there was the you know came out there dropped down to there there was the peak that was the old all time high and this is really some resistance We've broken through that resistance. So this is what is very interesting. We've broken through the resistance. Even with the downturn, Ethereum is holding up better than Bitcoin. So is this getting ready to rocket? And again, likely if Ethereum gets up and does something really crazy, it'll take the altcoins with it. I don't really consider Ethereum an altcoin anymore. I think the bark the market <laughs> the market is based around bitcoin and ethereum these days it's not bitcoin and the altcoins it's bitcoin ethereum and the altcoins and if ethereum gets on a really big run it is going to take all the altcoins with it because it still is you know at least by some considered to be uh, an altcoin i think it's actually one of the market movers now and when ethereum moves the market will move and likewise when bitcoin moves the market will move so I'm waiting to see what happens here. But there it is, the breakout, and it's still holding even with the downturn. All right, a couple of stories I want to look at. So Japan is to propose restricting stablecoin issuers to banks and wire transfer companies. So a lot of the stablecoins that are out there at the moment, they could get the punt from uh, many countries, and that is something that you know wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, you know, I'm not saying I really agree with stablecoins being only issued by banks and wire transfer companies, but that is probably the regulation that is coming. So it says down here, the financial service agency over in Japan uh, has said that crypto service providers involved in stablecoin transactions, including wallets, so it's not just exchanges and things like that, will also be brought under the financial regulator's oversight. Now, so, uh, 
one of the people has come out and said it's questionable whether setting blanket rules uh, as strong as those currently applied to banks is the right rep- right approach so that's yuri okinawa and he's a member of the panel and i would have to agree like the rules that we have for banks and stable coins and things like they worked once upon a time but look where our banks are now there's no point in us you know sticking to those old rules and regulations when it is so obvious that they don't work we really need to come up with new regulation and you know japan will set some kind of precedent whether the rest of the world will follow it or not is then going to be another question but again it is obvious that the financial system that we have doesn't work it's broken so we need to come up with a new one that does work and is more free market and you know isn't printing min- money into oblivion and again restricting it to only banks when banks obviously aren't doing the you know the greatest of jobs and then further down here it says the federal reserve board governor crystal christopher wallace argued against the pgw's recommendation he explained that he is fine with letting banks issue stable coins but disagrees that only banks should be allowed to issue them and that's what i agree banks you know why companies and things like that of course they're going to be allowed to have stable coins we can't stop that that's banks but again i go back to they haven't done the greatest job have they the system we have is failing and it's because of you know federal reserve banks and things like that and governments it's a combination of all of the above so why would you again want to limit stable coins to only banks for a system that's broken well that's because you know the richest people are in the world uh you know all still in that old traditional finance system very few of them are in this new crypto space they are coming across but they don't want to all of a sudden lose their wealth so that's the kind of conundrum we're in the you know the biggest amounts of money in the world are still in traditional finance they are merging into cryptocurrencies don't get me wrong they're coming but they can't simply just let all their old wealth disappear uh, and you know yeah basically disappear and go away and that you know walled garden that they've had simply just you know disappear overnight they're going to drag that out for a while and that is one of the battles that crypto is facing and it's not just going to be in japan it is going to be a worldwide thing that we're going to have to you know sort of deal with because again some country out there is going to set some kind of precedent their laws and regulations will come into play other countries will look to those and then they'll have to make their decision about whether they copy them or just you know use them as a base or completely ignore them because there's always that possibility as well now i've got a bit of news on australian sort of stuff uh this is one that i'm not proud of so craig wright owes Kleiman's company 100 million dollars for conversion now i don't have a problem with him paying the 100 million dollars i got a problem with him <laughs> claiming that he's satoshi and all that kind of stuff he's yeah it's been disappointing that that has you know come from an australian but anyway so it says here he has been found not to have a business business partnership with david Kleiman, a deceased florida ex, uh, florida forensics expert said however he still must pay 100 million dollars in compensation for stealing Kleiman's company in florida 100 million dollars wow i mean i don't know how much money craig wright has but i would say that's going to hurt the hip pocket and what's funny is bitcoin sv has had a mad pump so i don't know where that's come from but i would say he's probably going to be taking some profits along the way to try and pay that money but yeah craig wright i mean look there is a very small possibility that maybe he is satoshi or was in amongst the group that you know made bitcoin if it was a group you know but i just think it's unlikely he hasn't been able to do anything that would really prove that he is he's never been able to move any of the coins that haven't moved in such a long time and yeah anyway 100 million dollars he's got to pay uh, and it's good for the you know the Kleiman's uh company the Kleiman estate because 100 million dollars hopefully that will make them feel a, a lot better and look their, their lawyer come out and said they are happy that they're getting 100 million dollars as well and i don't know too many people who wouldn't be happy with 100 million dollars except for trillionaires 100 million is not a lot to a trillionaire i don't know if there are any trillionaires actually but billionaires anyway 100 million wouldn't be so much but to anyone else 100 million would be a whole lot all right cardano sunday sunday swap has finally launched now this i think is really going to lead to cardano you know having another explosion they they need a dex simple as that without a dex it's hard for any kind of blockchain to do really well there's got to be ways to swap uh, trade and all the rest of it 
and Cardano's finally got it. And look, maybe that's part of why it's made a little bit of a move. We saw that it had a nice little pump there, but it is a test net is what we need to remember. It's not a fully legit deck shed. They're just opening it up so people can use it. And look, they've already had a few issues. So here, might have to rebrand to Monday Swap or like that. In all seriousness, we found a bug with our scoopers renewing scooper licenses. Now, I don't know what that means. That's all techy kind of stuff, but there is an issue. Uh, we are cleaning that up, and as soon as it is completed, Testnet will be live for use. Thank you for staying patient uh, with us. So Sunday Swap, Cardano starting to make moves. I was talking about Cardano as well. I said it was at a low you know, not not a bad buy in my personal opinion, never financial advice. But, you know, here we see the ones that I've been talking about generally doing all right at the moment. Now, again, I'm not some savant and I'm not trying to pretend like I know exactly, you know, how coins are going to do and when it's going to happen. All I know is I like to buy good projects when they're not at all-time highs. And Cardano was super cheap. I think it was like $1.30, $1.40. And it was a $2 something. So it was basically 50% discount. And so that's why I really liked it. And again, any really good project that is down that much, I am more than happy to buy them at 50% discounts. I don't really care where we are too much in the cycle other than if it's at the very end. But at the very end, usually everything's going crazy. We don't know that it's going to play that way uh, in the future. But in the end, if it's a good project and I'm buying it at 50% discount, even at the end of the run, I don't mind. Number one, I'm not throwing everything into it. Number two, I'm still buying it at 50% off. And if I have to buy it all the way down to 90% off, then so be it. That's what I'll do. Again, I'll never be throwing everything. If it's obvious we're in a bear market, I'll be putting just little bits and pieces into things, mainly with cash sitting on the side. But good projects at 50 plus percent discount, I am buying. It's just not throwing everything, you know, as they say, I'm not throwing the kitchen sink at it if we're legitimately in a bear market, but I will be chipping away at any good projects, particularly Bitcoin, if I ever see it at a 50% discount. All right. Colombia's largest bank has tapped Gemini to offer Bitcoin and Ethereum trading to clients. So this is now starting to happen. Now, don't get me wrong, it'll most likely be the high-flying clients. That's usually the way it is. You know, the most wealthy ones are going to get all this stuff first. And that is what is, you know, truly scary, is the people that are investing in Ethereum and, you know, Bitcoin and those things now are generally, well, they've got to be people who understand and know crypto and we're a very small space, believe it or not, but then the, the kind of the wealthy we haven't got the bulk of the rest of the world here yet. They're, they're still a long way away, probably another five to maybe 10 years away. So the upside at the moment over the next decade is, you know, we, we can't even imagine really what it's going to be. And I remember someone, I think it was Raul Paul came out and I really loved what he said. And it's rang kind of true. We're all too bullish in the short term. Like, you know, we, you know, we think things are going to go so much higher than they are in the short term. But then we're way, we're way under bullish enough in the long term. So you know, a lot of people are thinking Bitcoin's going a hundred thousand and maybe two hundred fifty thousand, one hundred fifty thousand this run. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe eighty or ninety thousand uh, is kind of the top. But then, like people are saying, they think Bitcoin will be a million dollars within the next ten years. I would not be surprised if Bitcoin is worth a whole lot more than a million dollars in the next 10 years. Now, again, never financial advice. I don't have anything to back that up. There's not any charts or anything, but it's just a saying that has rung so true that I've seen throughout. And it's not even just crypto markets. It's all markets. In the short term, we're usually too bullish. We think it's going a lot higher. And then in the long term, we generally think things aren't going to go you know, quite as well as what they do end up doing. And, and that is something that's stuck with me. All right, now I want to get into some more uh, Australian news. So for my Australian viewers, and hopefully I have a few, there's been a massive jump in the number of Australians who own crypto. Now, even I've noticed this, there is a lot more people who are at least aware of it and sort of, you know, getting into it. But we are up 28%, sorry, we are up to 28% from 18.4% just a year ago. A 10% rise in a year. Now, that is a lot. Now, it's not 10% of all of Australians, though. We need to remember that. 
people that are into crypto are sort of in and around the space. It's not 28% of all of Australia is into crypto yet. I, I can assure you that we're not quite there yet, but they are becoming aware of it and we are getting more and more people because this was a survey done, which was probably done uh, with a, you know, crypto people in mind is what I was, is what I would say. Cause I don't, you know, out of all my friends, I don't know of about 30% of them who are into crypto. I know one or two who are into crypto and I know a few who are really heavy into crypto. Most of my friends, and again, like I'm a bit of a crypto head, obviously, they just kind of know about it, but they're not really into it. They're not buying it yet. So again, the upside over the next decade is still, yeah, I don't think people will really be able to comprehend it. Unfortunately, in the short term, they're going to, you know, overvalue it and think, again, Bitcoin's going to, you know, 300,000 in the next, you know, six months where, you know, I would not be surprised if Bitcoin doesn't even get to 100,000. It gets to, you know, somewhere between 80 and sort of 90,000. And then we go into, you know, some kind of bear market. And really, I don't think Bitcoin will retrace too much over 50%. My guess is that maybe 70% at most, and then the buying already starts. Now, again, never financial advice could be wrong. But all I know is whatever price Bitcoin gets to, if I ever see it at about 50% discount, and look, I'll probably be buying before then, I will be buying. And the lower it goes from 50%, the more aggressive I will get in my buying. Because I just get the feeling it'll be somewhere near that 50% outside of Bitcoin actually going to 300 you know, something thousand or 200 and something thousand, then I think we probably will retrace well over 50%. You know, let's say Bitcoin gets to 250,000, I think we would still see Bitcoin come down to maybe 30, 40, uh, 50, 60,000 after that. And that's much more than a 50% retracement. But again, time will tell, uh, you know, I, that's not based on any kind of facts or any kind of charts or anything. That's just my gut feeling. And, you know, I'm one of those people, a lot of people will tell you, oh, you should never invest on your gut feeling. You know, you got to, you know, play the opposite to human psychology. I mean, I'm a fairly suspicious kind of person anyway. So generally, my gut feeling is not too far off. Again, it doesn't mean I, you know, <laughs> again, can always time it exactly perfectly because I haven't, but I'm generally thereabouts. All right. Now, it's not just uh, any old Australians, but Australian women, the sisters out there. Nice doubled in 2021 the amount of women owning crypto in australia has doubled and again this is another survey done by the same people i think it was a independent reserve here in australia and it's good that women are now getting into investing because you know in previous history and not so much in sort of recent times but definitely back in you know my sort of times my parents times women didn't really invest the money was always a man thing the the women would simply you know work out the bills and do the shopping and things like that and please women don't get up me i'm not saying that that's how it should be i'm just saying that's how it kind of was and it's good that things are changing now women are, you know they make their own money you know they have their own jobs they have their own lives and now they're starting to invest and some of them are pretty clued on i mean kathy woods would be a perfect example she's a very intelligent lady she's you know, again, we'll have to wait and see. She's been intelligent up to this point, but whether that crypto thing plays out, my gut feeling says it plays out extremely well over the next 10 years. Just the volatility uh, will be quite steep. And when the bear market comes, you know, you can just about guarantee that people will probably be, you know, all over anyone from crypto, but particularly Kathy Wood saying, oh, you know, you put all this money in. But then again, over the, you know, following, you know, five years or, you know, eight years, whatever it is after that, she'll probably, you know, be looked at and seen as one of the smartest investors out there. She already is considered to be one of the smartest investors, but I think that will really solidify it for her. Now, last but not least, I mean, this happened a while ago and it's happened again. The ninth largest Ethereum whale has gobbled up billions of Shiba Inu. Billions. This happened a while ago as well. There was a dip and a whole stack of Shiba Inu was scooped up by Ethereum whales. So I don't own any Shiba Inu uh, and I'm just, yeah, I don't feel like I need to at the moment. I'm not saying that'll never change, but I just, I'm, I'm wary about, you know, meme coins and things like that long term. Short term, again, I've got into Doge twice uh, last year, doubled my money both times and got out. I was quite happy and look if i had a held for even longer i would have done so much better i was i was really in at really good prices but just the long term i'm not sure i'm game enough to put too much into shiba inu 
but the ninth largest Ethereum whale may well know a little bit more about crypto than me, or they may simply just have a whole lot more money than me, one or the other, because we don't know how long they've been in the game. It could be an institution who simply got in uh, in the last you know, 18 months or something like that, but they are pretty bullish on Shiba Inu. So I'd like to know your thoughts down below in the comments. Just let me know, are you bullish or bearish on Shiba Inu? Bullish or bearish is all I need. I'd really appreciate if you left a comment and look even more so if you just hit that like button. I'd really appreciate that, appreciate that as well. My videos don't get seen by enough people, I don't believe. And the way to help me, you know, have my videos seen by a whole lot more people is to leave a comment and also to hit the like and subscribe button. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We're all on the gain train at the moment over the last few days, but I'm just not sure it's going to hold in the short term at least. And I'll see you next time.